Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak and we are out here getting ready to go do some hunting for hogs. It is 92 degrees. It's very, very warm today. Um, and there's real good possibility of snakes being out there. As you guys, if you know me, you know I wear snake boots pretty much all the time now, being down here in Georgia. And uh, today we're going to talk about these two pairs here, because I have two here, the pros and cons. The gnats are out like crazy, too. They're driving me nuts. Um, but we have two kinds here. We got this classic Rockies. Okay, I like these a lot. These are a fantastic boot. I only have one flaw with them, one thing that I don't like, and I've got a lot of miles on these. Um, I've, I've worn them quite a few times this year, as you can tell. Um, but they're very, very comfortable. Sorry, again, there's gnats everywhere. Um, very comfortable, very, very lightweight. They're very, com I mean, they're just an incredible boot on that kind of level. Um, and they held up really well. The downside is that it seems to be right about where this mark is across here. As soon as I hit water that deep, I start to get any, I get, start getting a little leakage in. Might be through the seams, it's on both boots. But once I get about that deep, um, you know, right about in here, right that level, I start to uh, start to get water coming in, which is okay. I don't mind it because of the fact that when I'm wearing these, these I mainly bought these to wear um, through May, June, July, August, and into September, where it's a lot drier out. So I'm not really that super concerned about the water, but I like how high they are. Um, you know, they're, they're about the same height in comparison, but they don't have that open gusset on the back right here. If I get tagged right there, there's no snake guard right there. Something to think about. Um, but uh, I do like the boots a lot. Like I said, these are actually lighter than these are. And uh, they're just super comfortable and they just, they work fantastic and they held up very, very good. Um, they held up better than these do. And again, we'll talk about that. But uh, you, you get a lot of boot here for this hundred bucks is what I bought these for. Um, but they have no side zip on them. So they're not a side zip model. They do make those. I didn't want those. Again, told you about the Nats. Welcome to South Georgia. But there's no side zip on these, and I like that. They're really easy on and off. They're, they're, they're just real good quality. I really like them. Only thing I wish is we had a little more waterproofness up a little higher. Um, but like I said, both of them, not just one, but both boots will start to leak. Um, and that kind of gets annoying on there a little bit. But fantastic boot overall. I'm really happy with them. These have been a good boot, but they're... Um, they're kind of, I should have started out my thermosel. It does help with the gnats a little bit. The gnats are, I'll have it running when I'm out there. These Lacrosse 4X Alpha snake boots have been good. This is my third pair of these. Okay, now my first pair lasted me for almost two years because I was down here part time. Uh, since I'm down here full time, this is my second pair I've been through since getting down here in uh, when I, November. I got down here in November, and this is my second pair. And I, these ones are almost shot already too. Now, with that said, keep in mind, I do a minimum of 15 miles a week and often that can be 30 to 40 miles a week. Uh, I hunt a lot. I'm semi-retired and I spend a lot of time in the woods. And, uh, you know, I'm always spot and stalk hog hunting. So I'm putting a tremendous amount of miles on them. Like I said, minimum of 15 miles a, a week, minimum, minimum every single week there is of the year so i'm burning through these about every um about every four months now the first set lasted a while because i was part-time but it started to break down here which even on this one you can see here right here you can see that we're starting to get a little breakdown right there okay where that's constantly flexing i get a little bit there but that's not what's been taking them out of the game for me what has been is this one's holding up all right this seam right here will separate from constantly flexing, you know, as you flex his boot. It's actually, that one's not bad. Let's see how this one is. Like I said, these have been going for a few months. Yeah, see, this one here, watch right here. Watch this seam right there. Look at that. See how it's breaking apart already? That's been the problem that I've been having with these. Now, again, keep in mind, I'm getting a lot of miles out of these, all right? Um, so, I mean, every single week, a minimum of 15 miles a week. And let's say that I'm getting four four months out of these. Uh, four times, uh, you do four times eight. That's going to be 32 times. Uh, that, that's you know times. Even if I only did 10 miles a week, that's 320 miles. So you're talking almost 500 miles of walking. I'm getting out of a pair of these. So don't let that four month number scare you. Oh, I just swallowed that one. Like I said, South Georgia. 
um, nat time. Um, but uh, they've been holding up very, very good as far as I'm concerned. That is kind of a downside. But with the miles I'm doing, that makes a tremendous difference. These ones have been, these ones probably have pretty close to the same amount of miles on them. Probably 300 to 500 miles on these. And I'll bet these are good for another three or 500 miles without a problem, maybe even more. Um, but it's footwear. You're, you're going to go through this stuff. It's, it is what it is. Um, all these people, even with the Keen stuff, oh, well, they broke down after a year. What do, you, what do you expect? I mean, that's that's the way it goes sometimes with footwear. Um, you know, that's that's the way I look at it personally anyway. But these have been fantastic. That does bum me out a little bit. So I actually did buy, I haven't worn them yet. I've had them for about a month now. But I have the new version of lacrosse. I'll put a link to what it is below and I'll, I'll show a picture of it here. Their other model of this for me to try. It's like an arrowhead snake boot or something. Um, I will pull it up and show you, but I found them, um, and I, I bought those. I'm going to try. We'll see if they're going to be any different there, but that's that seam right there that is my problem, and I cannot patch it because it's a flex part, so there's no way to really fix or, or save that. So um, that's really the only downside to them, but otherwise, this boot right here is super comfortable. Most comfortable rubber boot I've ever worn in my life over everything, over burlies, over you name it. This is by far the most comfortable boot in a rubber boot that I've ever worn in my life. This one is just as comfortable as any hunting boot I've ever worn, even more so. This boot is lighter than a pair of Keen Pittsburgh uh, soft toes. It's lighter. This is lighter than you could ever imagine. I really don't have any other way to say it, but the weight of this boot is next to nothing. It feels like air on the bottom of your feet. It's amazing how that comes together. These are absolutely fantastic too. So, But they have their downsides. Like I said, this one, get below here you know the deeper than that i'm getting water in them this time of year when i'm using them i don't care again it's 90 90 something degrees out here if i get my feet wet it doesn't bother me and these dry really fast as well too if i get them wet and then i throw them back here in the back of my truck usually in a day or two they're dry enough anyway or the next day they're just damp so they dry pretty quick as well but uh they're, they're you know, like i said anything deeper than that you're getting wet in them these ones 100 percent waterproof all the way up but you do have that issue that after about about 500 miles of walking is let's just call it that average you're going to walk about 500 miles in these and when you get there you're going to start to get breakdown in here after about 500 miles you'll have to determine how much 500 miles is to you for me when with the way i'm going that's about four months um, I buy them when they are on sale. I usually can find good deals on them. These ones I paid $100 for these on sale. These ones I paid $139 for on sale from Bass Pro Shops. Amazon sometimes has sales on them as well too. And uh, But you can't go wrong. And like I said, once I test those other lacrosse ones, we'll put a little thought in on those as well too. But, um, you know, I got to have snake boots when I'm out here. Some people don't think you need them. Some people think that it's, you know, that, uh, oh, you're not going to step on them. If I showed you this stuff right here, I mean, if I just take that camera and spin it, let me just hit the pan knob. You're going to go walking through here on a 90 degree day. You're going to go trotting through this stuff like I'm about to do on a 95 degree day in, uh, in, in Southeast Georgia. You're going to do that without snake boots, more power to you. So if you're the kind of guy that's not going to do that and you're just going to walk down the trail, maybe you don't need the snake boots. But when you're like me and you're going to end up in here hog hunting, the snake boots become quite a necessity. So to each their own. I've encountered every single species of snake that Georgia has except for a coral snake so far. And I'm telling you, I'm happy I have the boots on. Uh, and and it just, it's a safety factor. Not that I'm afraid of snakes, not even a little bit. I actually love them. You can see I have a snake hook right here in my truck, right here, so that I can... Um, you know, play with them and get to know them and learn about them and stuff like that. Like I said, there's nothing about a snake that scares me. <sighs> Sorry, eating a lot of, we'll put that back, but eating a lot of, uh, a lot of gnats right now. If you watch my other video, I told you, sunglasses, the thermosel going, my head thing on. Like I said, it, the gnat season here is pretty bad. But uh, it's not that I'm afraid of the snakes. I'm afraid of the hospital bills and the downtime. That's it. That's the key thing. If I get tagged by a venomous snake and I don't have snake boots on, it could be upwards of a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in medical expenses, even with insurance. Can also be two weeks in the hospital with no work, no nothing, no hunting, no anything. This is cheap, simple insurance to make sure that you don't have to go through that. So for me, I wear them. And not only that, they're incredibly comfortable. 
They're incred incredibly effective. They do everything I need. So call me a pansy, call me whatever you want, but some of the best hunters I know, they're in snake boots 99% of the time. Some of the other best hunters I know are not, and they're out here in, in Crocs and uh, flip-flops and not a care in the world. To each your own, whatever makes you the most comfortable. But if you're looking for a snake boot, my recommendation right now of the ones I've tried, and a rubber one for pure comfort and longevity, which is pretty good. Again, 500 miles. Can't beat this Lacrosse 4 Alpha uh, snake boot. And if you want a canvas style like this or a ballistic nylon style, uh, this Rocky has been phenomenal. Just understand that waterproofness. Now, all of these ones are going to leak. I don't care who makes it, okay? I know people that have hunted in every single one of these types of boots. They will all leak water. This will never be waterproof. I don't care what it's made out of. This will be waterproof. This is full rubber. 100% waterproof to the top. This one, proving waterproof to right here. Not anymore, but it's to be expected. But these dry really quick. This one, when I do get water and I get a soaker in here, this has got to go on my heater vent upside down for two days like this to dry out before I can wear them and have them dry. This dries very, very quick. So there you go. All right, these gnats are, as you can see, they're all over me, driving me crazy. I need to get my bug spray on, get myself set up, get out there and hunt. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.